first video of the year with actual sewing and a little bit cliche, a little bit of active wear coming for you. <laughs> Colorful, easy to sew leggings. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I have some active way to share with you the first video of the year with an actual sewing tutorial where I've actually filmed things and this was actually a project I was sewing the 1st of January, believe it or not we had a very chill 31st, you know, where there's not nothing special going on we did go to sleep, you know, just uh, like a regular day <laughs> and then the next day was a normal sewing day for me and I made some leggings. So very nice way to start the year. I said it was a little bit cliche about all those resolutions. I am no different to a lot of people. For me, 2020 took a really big hit into what I like doing for myself to keep active. I really, really enjoy going to actual gyms. Just going in there and seeing other people doing things motivates me. I don't go there to make friends. I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> I'm always wearing a cap and earphones and I'm just keeping to myself. But just walking into a place like that just motivates me to go. And I really enjoy the environment, having all the equipment I need. I couldn't do that in 2020 <laughs> and for a couple of months I was even scared to go walking or running outside for the fear of running into other people and just them passing me and towards the end of the year I did find a time and a place where I could go outside and be active and just really enjoy the environment the green around me I am in a rural area so it's really nice to get out there has to be super early though around six in the morning to avoid people and the heat so making some nice leggings for myself is just a little boost a little way to motivate me to make myself happy to choose really nice fabric and just make some nice things for me to wear out there you know here if I want to buy leggings they are super expensive and when I've seen them in the past I touch the fabrics I don't like them I know they are not going to fit me correctly so it's just nicer to make them yourself the pattern I made was the sundial leggings from green style creations I was a pre-tester and a tester they have a smaller group that does the pre-test with the basic pattern just to adjust major things and then there's a regular testing phase it's like in two phases and I really like how that works because it just fine tunes all the details I made one in the pre-tester version that was my muslin and then I made one in the official testing so it was really fun I jumped on the chance because I loved the design of course I knew it was going to be a project that was going to be relaxing for me to start the year off with nothing too stressful but something really practical and super pretty I do have an affiliate link for it in the description box if you like them while you see the video you'd like to try and make them you're very welcome to use my affiliate link if you want to and I make a little commission from that sale I can tell that there's specialized knowledge in drafting these types of patterns compared to other legging patterns I've made I always like the waistbands better the way the leg and the thigh fits uh, there's just extra Extra little things built into there this one as legging goes I would say is an easy low fast type of legging you know the leg doesn't have a side seam so it's just one extended piece that involves the whole leg you just have an inseam you can choose long length or capri the pretty factor here is this really wide curved waistband that ends in a V on the front and you can have options here a regular one that finishes like a curved waistband on the top the V at the bottom or one that crosses over and forms a V on the top and the bottom or both together layered so very nice options these types of designs just let you express yourself and be creative and just create what you want to make you know a combination of colors and prints so I always find that fun when patterns have things that you can do like that there is a small triangle gusset that is optional it's there only if you want to use it I have used it because I always like gussets green style creations size chart is different than other size charts not numerical or with S or M extra large that sort of thing it's from a B to an M so you have to really look at the size chart there to see your size my size is a size H and size M which is the largest goes up to a waist of 57 and a hip of 63 in the size chart for these leggings you'll find really detailed body measurements waist hips thighs and calves because the shape of this legging on the leg is really shaped it's not just like straight up and down on the sides it's really well shaped to what a leg could be so if you needed to change sizes between one and the other depending on your type of body if you have smaller thighs or smaller calves or the opposite you know you could easily just blend and play around until you get your nice feet according to your body measurements there's no finished garment measurements there and I can totally see why if they were 
you would be shocked because when you sew these and make them, they look extremely small, but you are working with stretchy, stretchy fabric. The fabric that you need needs to stretch 75% horizontal and 50% vertical. So you need fabric that stretches both ways, horizontally and vertically. And in Up Close and So Personal, I will show you how I measure that. I'll show you some alternatives of fabrics that I had and why I ended up choosing what I chose. <laughs> really practical for you. I know the stretch percentage and all that sort of thing is confusing for a lot of people. So I always try to include that when I'm sewing with stretchy knit fabrics that are meant for athletic wear it is really important that you have the right type of fabric you can't make this for example with a ponty i wouldn't make it with a cotton spandex you know it's not good recovery they'll just sag they'll fall also when you're sweating you know cotton holds on to all that sweat or that water and you end up drenched it doesn't evaporate you know like proper athletic needs to. There's a huge sort of textile industry in Brazil still that, that makes active wear, you know, exports and everything. So there is a good production of fabrics here and I'm able to find really nice active wear materials that are high quality and they are pricey, pricey, but still the legging ends up costing less than what I would pay for one that is of lesser quality in the shops and that won't fit me correctly, you know? You always want fabrics that have a high content of lycra spandex elastane that is the same component it's just called different you know different places 10 or more percent my specific fabric has 14 percent you need that type of fabric that will stretch and boom come right back up close and so personal is really really comprehensive today i have a lot in there i mentioned i was going to show you how i chose my fabric the stretch i'm going to show you how i'm sewing both types of waistbands i'm also showing you how i did some feet adjustments you might think how do you make feet adjustments on a pair of leggings if you think you can't make active wear that making leggings is really hard it for sure it isn't and you can see how to do that next you think this is start to I'm going to show you how much stretch some of my fabrics have and how I've made my decision to my final pair. Here on the 20, let's pretend that's zero and I'll be measuring against four inches. That is what I usually do. So from 20 to 24, the pattern calls for 75% stretch. To 28 would be 100% stretch. If my fabric stretched from 24 to 26, that would be 50% stretch. And then if it stretched up to 27, that would be 75% stretch. So I'm seeing if my fabric can stretch when I have it here from 24 to 27, and that would be 75%. I'll place the edge of my fabric here on the 20. I have the four right there, that's four inches that I want to test. And I'll stretch and it reaches 27 very easily. So this would be 75% stretch. It's, it's it's quite a nice heavyweight knit. It stretches that much horizontally and vertically. It also has a great stretch. So this is what I used for my muslin. This next one is a very heavyweight compressive knit. It's very good quality. It's very stretchy. It's got a lot of spandex in there. It stretches really well horizontally and vertically. That's what you need. And so I'll put the edge here on the 20 inches hold it there where it's 24 and see how much it will stretch. It reaches 27 easily. It does not reach 28. So this does actually have 75% stretch. It's really good. Now look at this print. It's got all these weird stripes and stuff. I would love to use it. I know a pair of leggings in this would look very well, but I'd be concerned about matching the front crotch and the back crotch and, and the waistband. I'm not, just not in the right headspace to do that today, right now. <laughs> so that is the reason why I'm not choosing this one, although it would be very appropriate. This fabric is exactly the same fabric as the other one, so I won't show you how it stretches. And I also have the dilemma of trying to match these chevrons that are printed onto the fabric. I know I would be very disturbed if I didn't match the front and the back crotch and everything. and. I'm just not in the right headspace for it. You know, there's a time and a place to tackle projects like this that need this type of matching. And I think when you want to match something like this, <clears throat> it's a little harder than matching just regular stripes. 
so that is why I'm not using that. This is the same type of fabric, only it's just got a random print on it all over. There's nothing I would need to match or worry about. I think it's a lovely color. Um, fun leggings, I would enjoy wearing. The colors, purple and pink and black, I think is really cool. And let's see, I'll just put the edge here on the 20 and other on the 24 and see. And it's it's got a lovely stretch. I mean, it'll stretch very nice horizontally and vertically. They are heavy fabrics, they are not lightweight and I know it'll be super nice. These are athletic knits, so it's not like I'm guessing if they're going to work, they are for leggings. This is the fabric I've chosen. These are all the pieces that you get for the waistband options. This large piece here is cut once on the fold and this is the one that's going to form the waistband that crosses over in the front. So it will give you like a V look on the front of the waistband at where you sew it to the leggings and on your abdomen. So that's that piece, it's just one piece. And then if you want to do the regular waistband that also finishes in a V at the bottom but at the top is just nice and straight you have four pieces. Third option is to do it layered. Then you would cut this piece and all those pieces and layer those waistbands together on top of each other. If you do contrast fabric, you will have different colors on the waistband and you will see that V feature. This piece is the one that you're going to cut twice, one per leg, there's no side seam. So this is where the side of your leg would be, but it's all extended. When you look at these, you see a shorter crotch and that is the front as always. And then the longer one is the back. On the top, you can see that it's curved and you see two lines there that is up to you whether you want a mid-rise or a high-rise I'm going to choose the high-rise and you can see the shape of this leg you can see how it curves out a little bit and that's to accommodate for calves so that was drafted like that I think it's amazing that a legging pattern will account for the volume that calves have on the leg that's really nice and right there there's another line for you to cut a cropped version that is what I'm going to use the good thing about this pattern and the there's a lot of information on the instructions as well is how you can modify the rise to fit your body. There is a short and a lengthened line right across like that. To make rise modifications you would cut across and either add like this or if you want to make it shorter you would overlap but it sometimes is the case that you don't need to raise the same amount on the front or the back. So when I made my muslin in a pink athletic knit, I just added an inch just to try because I know for my body I always need to add, I have a longer than standard rise, I know that. So I added an inch front and back and my front ended up perfect with that extra inch added but I always thought I needed an extra half an inch at the back just the way the leggings fit and everything. So in that case I would keep that at an inch right there, but just add a little bit more at the back. I've got this paper with the brown table underneath so you can see the difference. That is all I would need to do and it is very well described in the instructions what to do if you just need to add to the back or to the front or to both, that sort of thing. So that is what I'm going to do for my final pair. I know that an inch at the front extra is good for me and one half extra at the back is good for me. This is not related to the volume of my backside at all. It's related more to my anatomical features. I have a really long pelvis. A lot of my length goes beyond my waist down to my legs, so I do have a, a really long rise actually. So that's why I need to do this adjustment. It's super easy, I'll just fill in paper behind there. So if you just needed to add half an inch, you would just add half. If you needed one, you know, maybe the back was fine and you just needed more length at the front. You know, that's why I suggest making a short version to check that this fits. At least for me, it's super important to know to get the fit right because my good athletic knits are hard to find and they are pretty expensive. So when I cut into them, I want to make sure that it's going to fit really, really well. That's why I did make a muslin out of a good quality athletic knit but it's not one I would have chosen and I found it at a discount price. Also if you need to make length adjustments for your legs, if you are shorter or taller than 5 foot 7 you might want to adjust the leg length. There is a, a short and a lengthened line here around the thigh so you might want to play with that and there's also another short and a lengthened line right there below the calf. So I would suggest if you need to add a lot of length to your legs, you would add it in two sections. Same as if you're, for example, five foot tall and need to take away quite a lot, you would take away in two areas to not deform the leg. 
drafted for 5 foot 7 I'm 5 foot 8 there's not much difference there so I won't modify anything this though this does need modification to fit my body this is a little piece that's optional it's a crotch gusset you cut two of them mirror images of each other and it says they're greatest stretch so you need the fabric to stretch that way you cut it in the same direction that you're cutting all the other pieces this is the bottom of the back crotch and you can see a line there cut here for optional crotch gusset so you can either just fold it away i'll be just folding mine away to get rid of that if you're going to use the gusset if you're not then you just cut the whole thing normal this is how my pattern looks like finalized after filling it in with paper added an inch right there added an inch and a half over there and just filled it up with paper the fact that i have slightly more at the back than at the front doesn't really change much of anything my piece is ready to go and i know it's going to fit well these are all the waistband pieces for my two leggings. The four that you see on the top are for the regular waistband has the V on the front. So these are the two fronts, those are the two backs. The one on top is the outer front, that's the inner front. This is the one that's slightly shorter and over there is the outer back and the inner back. All you do with this is put the outer waistbands together and the inner waistbands together. So I've put them together. I'm treating this as the right side for my waistband and that's how I've placed them together. And you just sew them there, 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 and then you put one inside the other. For this one that crosses over, I think it's easier. Just take the top and fold it onto each other, wrong sides together, and you'll see that shape. On the top we have the folded edge, on the bottom we have the two raw edges. And then you just bring it like this and cross it over the front. So bring this one over and have it meet like that so you have all these raw edges there raw edges there and you have that v that forms in the center put to put this one together you just need to base this there and then the waistband will act as one piece it's the same v that you have on this type of waistband and then you sew it onto the leggings in the exact same way that you would sew that one this is the top of my colorful leggings it's the same for the other pair the technique to sew the waistband will be exactly the same because all these versions end up in a point here you can see how this ends up in a V on the leggings and then you have your waistband piece that also ends up in a V. This is the one that crosses over and as I mentioned I was going to baste it on the bottom and I have small seam allowance, smaller than the seam allowance I'm going to use and the folded edges on the top, the raw edges are on the bottom. So I'm just going to slide this waistband inside the leggings and I'll have right sides together, right side to right side. And the way I'm going to sew this V is a little bit different but it's going to end up super good. And basically here I'll mark a point with my pin about 3 8 of an inch below that point there and I'll get the same pin and go right through there. You can see there will be 3 8 seam allowance there, 3 8 seam allowance there and in the center there will be a point there. So I'll pin that there. This V section on the front of the waistband will be sewn in two separate sections. So I'll just pin that there very carefully. I'll sew about an inch from here up to that point right there and I'll reinforce. And then I have to pivot the waistband underneath and do the same on the other side and I'm going to start here on the other side on the same section but I'm leaving the seam allowance free. And that's how the point is going to turn out super precise, super like a really nice V there. If you try to do it with sewing the seam allowance down, I think the V might end up a tiny bit rounded. So let's sew just a little section there, same zigzag that I'm using everywhere. Align the raw edges, 3 8 seam allowance, I've got my zigzag stitch and I'll sew right up to there. Before my needle hits the seam line there, I'll just do it by hand and now I'll go back, reinforce. See, you can see that reaches up to there. Now on this other side, I'll just move all this to the other side. I'll push the seam allowance this way. I will shift my waistband that's underneath, pivoting it. And now I'll sew a small section on the other side. So I'll start exactly there and then sew just a little bit here leaving the seam allowance free there. It's not caught in any of these two seams. I want to make sure that all the bulk is pushed away. I'll let my needle down by hand, making sure it's right where I want it to land. Okay, it's right there and now I'll start sewing. 
Okay, so you can see how this looks inside. I sewed a small section there up to that point. They all reach the middle right there, as you can see. And then I started again on that same point and continued. Now, when we look at this from the other side, look how beautiful this V is there on the waist. It's super nice, super precise. I'll put my waistband back inside my leggings and I'll mark a point here at the center back of the waistband with a pin and I'll match that to the center back of the leggings and then the waistband will probably be a tad smaller than the actual leggings I'll just stretch to fit, pin around the edges and sew it with my zigzag stitch and then serge so I've matched the center waistband with the center back of the leggings put a pin there I flipped my leggings to the other side because I want to sew with the waistband being on top of the leggings so you can see how much bigger the waist is of the leggings and how smaller the waistband is this is just going to ensure it's going to be a nice snug fit and they're not going to fall you know there's no elastic in these waistbands so i put several pins to help me same zigzag stitch i'd already sewn this small v section there so that's already sewn so i'll start there go all the way around and finish where i'd started before so i've got the waistband on top and i'm pulling slightly to match the waist of the leggings underneath I'm reaching almost to the point there, so I'm almost done sewing this waistband. Then I just have to serge the edges and do the hem and that's it. These are very easy and very fast to put together. If there's one step that needs a little bit more care is this V-section, but as you saw it wasn't hard to do at all. Now when I serge, I'm going to push the seam allowance that's just dangling free to the same direction that is sewn on into the crotch there. So I will make sure to serge it in that direction there. I'll just pin it there so I remember that it's going that way when I serge it. I've sewn the side seams of both waistbands, the inner waistband and the outer waistband, and now I need to join them on the top. So I'm just gonna put one inside the other so that I have right sides together. So I'm gonna flip the inner waistband, put it inside. When I put this one inside, the right sides will be touching there. So one inside the other and now I just have to sew on the round and then flip it the other way. Okay, so that's sewn. I'm using a zigzag that is not too shallow compared to others I use. So for this one I'm using 1.5 width and 2 length. So it looks sort of the same. I think this allows a bit more stretch than those that are really shallow. Because there's negative ease here, I do really want this to stretch nicely without anything popping. Now we flip it and this seam will be on the top because the inner waistband is a little bit shorter. The seam will roll to the inside and it won't be seen. So you can see this is the back portion, this is the front, this is where the little V is. Here you can see the top of the leggings. This is the front, that is the back. I've got it wrong sides out, so the right side of my fabric is in there. So now I've got my waistband. This is the right side of my waistband because I want it to contrast. But if you were working with the same type of print and using it normally, you would have the hot pink here on the outside. It's just that I've decided to leave it as the wrong side for my waistband. But basically you would slide this in and you would have right sides together. This is my right side of the leggings and I'm using this as the right side for the waistband. That's why it looks different. When you look at your waistband inside, make sure the inner waistband is what you're looking at and that the outer waistband is out here. What you'll see also is that you have the seam of the waistband rolling inside. This inner waistband is shorter. So you should look at the inner waistband there and then have your leggings there. This is how the waistband looks. I think it looks really pretty. That V shape is really apparent when it's finished. Super nice. It's a nice tall waistband. I really like that. It hits my waist with the fitting adjustments that I've done. And you can see how the seam rolls inwards because the inner waistband is a tad shorter. This fabric on the outside, it's a little bit scratchy. It has these little glitter things. So 
I definitely did not want any of these touching my skin. These pink ones, I'll show you the fabric. Maybe the camera will focus. It's full of sparkles and this fabric has the right stretch. You know, it's got the right properties. It would never be a fabric I would buy if I saw in a shop and said, oh, I want pink leggings. But, you know, back in the beginning of the year when I was able to go to a shop, I found this in a remnant bin and it was very, very discounted. And I thought, perfect, you know, this is going to be the perfect muslin fabric for leggings. I still have a ton left, so much more of this left. So it's really important for me to make these leggings because my nice athletic knit fabrics, as I said, are pricier, way pricier than other types of apparel fabric. So I don't want to be experimenting with those and like cutting it up to see, you know, if it fits right. You know, I'd rather play with this type of stuff. And they are wearable, they are nice, but they don't feel as nice on the body as my nice ones do. They were practical though to show you how to sew this waistband. This is the one that finishes just with a normal curve on the top and then the V on the front. You can see that the V is not very well defined right there with the technique that I used. I tried my best to get it really well defined, but then I figured out how to do it better. And that's what you saw in the video, in the tutorial of how to sew that V. Because all these waistband options, they all have the same technique. You sew them in the same way. It's just that what's here is different. So this specific one has an internal waistband and an external one. And I showed you that this one is shorter so that the seam rolls to the inside. What you see on the outside is really smooth. And you know, this, this fabric is super comfortable. It's super soft inside. It's just thick and I feel, I feel hot in this and you know, they're nice. It's a nice wearable pair of leggings that I will probably wear when I don't have my other ones available. I'm not annoyed I made them. They accomplished the purpose of checking fit, of filming a tutorial, which is always super important for me in my sewing to be able to film things that you can see. So that's why that one comes along. So that's why this one also has value. And let's see it on. This is the pair I made first as a muslin. So it's a hot pink fabric with sparkles. I would have never purchased it, hadn't been discounted. It's not my favorite fabric, but it accomplished the purpose of checking fit, confirming that the size was correct. And also let me know that I needed a little bit more length on the back rise only. So it has its purpose. They are wearable. They just aren't my total favorites. I do like my final pair better, of course, it's better fabric. I made these first and you can see that the V here is not that pronounced. I did fix that with my final pair. I figured out a technique that was going to work better for me. So they still look nice. You can sort of see the V like that, but it's not like a really, really sharp V like the final pair have. So I like it. They are still high waisted. The waistband is very nice. It reaches up to my waist. I still needed a tad more length at the back. But I can still wear these and I really like this waistband. The waistband is the best part. It's very contoured and it feels really nice on this part of the tummy. My midsection is my own private part of my body that I don't really like to share that much. So you won't be seeing much of that. But I hope you could see the regular aspects, how the legs fit, how that waistband fits. And what I'm just trying to portray is that they feel really good and that the waistband feels really, really nice on. Like it just compresses your tummy. And whenever you're doing anything that makes your body move, you want that compression. It just feels really nice. These are my final pair and the, this fabric is so nice. It's so nice. When you have it on, it feels like you're not wearing anything. It just feels really light. You know, if you sweat, that sweat will evaporate. It is specialized fabric, you know. Unfortunately, the print is very busy, so you can't really see the details that much, but you did see them when I was sewing. There is a V point there of this waistband. It is very sharp, very neat. You know, if I would have done this in black, you would see it, but I didn't. <laughs> I really like this waistband. It crosses over, as you see. So it it's, hits a little bit lower on the front. It covers, it just about covers half of my belly button here on the front. But on the sides, it's nice and high right at my natural waist. 
and at the back as well it has the same curve you can see the shape of the waistband there with that one it's the same it would be exactly the same only the fronts are different they both end in v's this one crosses over this is just one piece and the other option that i didn't want to do was to make both waistbands put them together and then sew them on the leggings i thought it was just going to be too heavy too thick for me and also i'm sewing with my regular sewing machine here i never want to do things that had too many layers and add like strain to my machine I really try to protect my machine, <laughs> also my serger. It's very basic. I don't think it would have handled all those layers that well. But I'm sure if you have better equipment, it, you could. It's just that I just stick to what I can do and I'm very happy just having a single, single waistband. <laughs> the gusset is cut twice and you put them wrong sides together and then you treat that piece as one piece. So it's a double layered gusset. And you can see the little triangle there and then it goes there. The tip of this triangle of the gusset is part of the back crotch. It's very, very easy to sew, very well explained in the instructions. You can see my zigzag stitch. I actually use a zigzag setting where you can see the zigzag. I don't use a shallow zigzag when I sew active wear. I do want there to be a nice length and width because that type of zigzag allows more stretch. I do use the shallow zigzag when I'm sewing like a dress or a t-shirt, something that just needs a tiny bit of stretch when you're putting on and things. But as I mentioned, these, when you look at them, there's, they're very small, <laughs> the size of them. And it's because the fabric is just super stretchy. So I don't want to have my seams popping or ripping. So far, so good. All the leggings that I've made with this zigzag setting have worked fine. It's a 1.5 width with a 2.0 length. It's pretty much a really even zigzag, but smaller. <laughs> It works. So let's see this one on. These are my sundial leggings in a size H. Purple, pink and black print. Super nice athletic type of meat. Perfect for leggings. I feel super nice on. I feel like I have actually nothing on. There's no side seams here. Just the inseam and a small gusset. And the waist is high, but I'll show you that up closer. I chose the high-waisted option. There is a line here to cut it a little bit lower, but this hits right at my waist with the length adjustments that I made. And this is the crossover waistband. You can see it crossing over from this side to there. So on this section of the abdomen, it looks like a little V. Not too comfortable showing my tummy, so that's all you can see. And because this is all one print, you can't really see the V right there, but the V is very, very neat. If I'd done this in a contrast color waistband, you would see it better. But I didn't really want to do that, you know, I'm always going to be wearing my leggings like that. What I care most about is how this feels. It feels high, it just brings it all in. There's really nice compression here in the midsection and it feels so nice. It's a curved waistband, very shaped, you know, it's not a rectangle. And at the back, it's got all the coverage I need at the back here so I can move and do everything I want without the fear of them going down. There's no elastic inside the waistband, you know, there's a lot of negative V's here and that's why the material needs to stretch 75%. So I'm super content, you know, I would pay a lot of money for something like this and the fact that I can make it myself in my size, adjust the length to fit my body perfect is amazing. I bought other leggings in shops that just the rise is too short for me and it ends up looking terrible in the front. You know, wedges at the back that I don't get with these. So I'm very happy I was able to make these. Super easy to sew, low fast type leggings, you know. Very basic, but very well fitting. I know they're very basic. I really enjoy them because they're really easy to sew. You can make a bunch of these in one afternoon if you just cut them all out. I would take the time to fit them though. Um, I'm really impressed that the instructions tell you how to adjust the rise on leggings because sometimes that instruction is not there. There's just a shorten and lengthen line and that it also includes it, the fact that some of us just need to add to the back or to the front or to both you know it's all there that's why i also wanted to show you in you know visually what i did with mine having a perfect fitting pair of leggings with the fabric that you chose is amazing because i mean that's why i sew basically when i see shops and look at people buying clothes i think do they really like all that stuff you know or maybe when we sew, we just start getting these other standards. Sometimes I might like a style in a shop, but I don't like the print or the way the fabric feels. And those are things that we can't control if you, if you don't sew. 
but when we do so we can have all those options and all that power to make the right combination of the style the fabric the color the feel everything and that's what i love the most about sewing and what i love the most about my final pair of leggings the fabric is amazing i think it's really pretty it's really fun it feels super soft like i'm not wearing anything the rise fits my longer the standard rise and it's just pretty so I had a lot of fun as a first of the year project on the 1st of January. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. And maybe if you haven't made any leggings for yourself, you might want to try. You know, you could stop wasting money on expensive leggings in the shops and make them yourself. I do have an affiliate link for this pattern. It is a new pattern. I was a pattern tester and it's 25% off through Sunday the 10th at midnight. So there's still a couple of hours for you to get it a bit cheaper if you would like to try this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye, happy sewing.